Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. My previous video on the natural outcrop of Gebel Ghibli at Giza has had a fantastic response. So in this video, I'll be looking into this area in far more detail as I look to reveal the location of the fabled Ancient Egyptian Hall of Records. There is actually very little written about Gebel Ghibli and our main sources of information are the work of authors David Allen Ritchie, Simon Cox and Andrew Collins, all of whom point out that it is a site shrouded in mystery, but one of great significance and is the key part of the Giza puzzle. We can all argue about the function of the Giza pyramids, but the one thing everybody agrees on is that they encode advanced geometry, mathematics, acoustics and harmonics, and I'm sure that this is for a very specific purpose. They are undoubtedly a time capsule of knowledge. As I outlined in my last video, Gebel Ghibli is a key location in the Giza Plateau, an integral part of this geometrical puzzle, but I believe for a very different reason. In terms of the history of Egypt, it is my belief that this reason is the most important. It is what everything is pointing towards. Edgar Cayce had predicted that a time capsule from Atlantis would one day be discovered in Egypt, a prediction that is often called the Lost Hall of Records. Many have speculated that the location is inside the Great Pyramid, but I believe nothing of note was ever placed inside. In my opinion, the importance of the Great Pyramid is the structure itself, and the mathematics and geometry it encodes. The Giza Plateau is a mysterious place, and there are certainly structures that predate the pyramids, such as the Sphinx and the Wall of the Crows. In bygone days, we are told that its former name was Rostau, the place where a 10-day festival, Egypt's oldest, took place at a specific location on the plateau known as the Shetayet of Sokar, more commonly called the Tomb or House of Sokar Osiris. Interestingly, the French Egyptologist C.M. Zivi believes that Rostau was not a name for the entire Giza plateau as many believe, but it was in fact the specific region around Gebel Ghibli. So why is this important? Sokar is arguably the oldest deity known in Egypt, far older than Osiris and responsible for many of the later god figures of dynastic times. Although evidence is sparse, experts can piece together a picture that shows that Sokar was important not only in dynastic but also in archaic and pre-dynastic times. He was the main god of the Memphite necropolis, and the main objects of his cult were the primordial mound, believed to be Gebel Ghibli, and his sacred boat called the Henu Bark. Sokar is seen in representations of the fourth and fifth hours of the Duat, the ancient Egyptian realm of the dead, also known as the underworld, where he reigned. This mythical world was believed by ancient Egyptians to be a real location at Giza. This entrance into the underworld was the Shetayet of Sokar, the House of Sokar, and it was guarded by two acre lions, one of the reasons that I believe the Sphinx was originally a lion. As well as the Primordial Mound and the Henu Bark, the House of Sokar is one of the oldest parts of the Giza Plateau, and is therefore the most likely place for the ancient Egyptian Hall of Records. Due to the well-documented festival, we know that the House of Sokar was a very real place, and yet today, in the 21st century, its location is a mystery. The annual event continued through the dynastic era from the Old Kingdom to the New, and was a major event for many generations of Egyptians. It involved people parading the Henu Bark, Sokar's personal vessel we so often see in artistic depictions. On its deck was a sort of chapel with a conical roof, on which was mounted the head of a falcon, which was a symbol of Sokar. Inside the chapel was an idol that represented Sokar. The sacred Henu Bark boat was taken to the now lost Shetayet Shrine, the entrance to the underworld, and here the secrets or mysteries of the god would be enacted. Close by there was also a building, a sanctuary, where the Henu Bark was kept. These were all real, physical locations associated with the Sokar myths and festival. 
They are believed to predate the pyramids, and evidence says they were all in the vicinity of the primordial mound, Sokar's Mound, which is Gebel Ghibli. As mentioned in my previous video, Gebel Ghibli is the only point on the Giza Plateau from which all nine pyramids can be seen. It is without doubt an important and sacred location. Looking back through historical accounts, when exploring the area around Gebel Ghibli, the famous explorer Flinders Petrie found, and I quote, many pieces of red granite, and some of the stones scattered about the west side of the rocky ridge, as if some costly building had existed in the region. This description places a possible structure just to the west of the southern hill of Gebel Ghibli, which is in line with the Wall of the Crow, which again I mentioned in my last video. I propose that this wall could be an ancient enclosure wall of the Giza Plateau, whilst Howard Weiss speculated it was the remains of an ancient causeway. Others speculate that due to its clearly ancient age, it is actually a boundary wall of the House of Sokar and the Henu Bark Sanctuary. Egyptologist Mark Lehner thinks the wall may be the oldest structure on the plateau. We know that it is a cyclopean structure with truly enormous limestone blocks, very reminiscent to the structures we see in South America. It is tempting to speculate that the red granite found by Petri could have belonged to the Henubark Sanctuary of Sokar, and if this is the case, the House of Sokar could not be far away. So, to summarise, the House of Sokar is a very sacred and mysterious place where pilgrims visited through the dynastic age. We know it existed at Rostau, an ancient name for the area of Giza close to Gebel Ghibli, where the remains of a substantial and important building have been found. It may have joined up with the ancient megalithic wall known as the Wall of the Crows. This area contains the primordial mound of Gebel Ghibli and is without doubt the oldest part of Giza and the obvious location of Sokar's realm. But is there any other evidence to say that the House of Sokar is in the vicinity of Gebel Ghibli? The most compelling evidence for an ancient structure in prehistoric times comes from the so-called building texts of the Greco-Roman temple in Edfu, built between 237 and 57 BC. They allude to the existence of a deep underground structure somewhere near Giza that contains an object of great power. The Edfu texts are a patchwork of stories, fragments derived from several lost sources which discuss the first time Zep Tepi. They talk of Egypt's primordial island of first creation at Memphis, the structure of a sacred shrine or temple, beneath which was a subterranean structure called the Duat or Underworld. The Duat, of course, being the House of Sokar. All the pieces seem to fit together, and then we have yet more evidence of the Great Sphinx. Standing between its paws is the dream stella of Tutmos IV. It stands 7 feet tall and 3 foot wide, and was once a door lintel from the mortuary temple of Khafre. It was used to commemorate a special event in the life of a young prince. Prince Tutmos had been out hunting at Giza. He decided to rest beneath the Sphinx, which was, at the time, buried up to its neck in sand. When he fell asleep, the Sphinx spoke to him in his dream, proclaiming that if Tutmos cleared the sand from his body, he would make the prince a king. This is a story we all know, but the most telling part of the tale comes halfway through when it describes the area where Tutmos is resting as being beside Sokar in Rostau. So, this implies that the Sphinx was beside Sokar, the original god of the dead, but where exactly? The Stella goes on to say, Sekhmet presided over the mountain, the splendid place of the beginning of time, aka the Zeptepi. Sekhmet is linked to Sokar in that in 18th century tombs, she is depicted with him in the 4th and 5th hours of the Duat. She is believed to encompass the hill of Sokar. She was the lioness-headed goddess, wife of Memphite creator, Patar, personifying the unbearable heat of the sun, with her body being its blinding glare. As Andrew Collins notes, from the latitude of Egypt, the midday sun would always have been south of the zenith meaning that if viewed from the Sphinx, the location of the Dream Stella, the noonday sun would always have been directly above the summit of Gebel Ghibli, whatever the day of the year. 
Gebel Ghibli was therefore the mountain over which Sekhmet was seen to preside, and therefore it was the splendid place of the beginning of time, and also the hill or mound of Sokar. So, Rostau was the location of the Sokar festival, and Rostau was also the area around Gebel Ghibli, the sacred mound of Sokar. The house of Sokar was in this region, and now we just need to find out where. Today, Gebel Ghibli towers over two relatively modern cemeteries, one Muslim and one Coptic, located just to the south of the Sphinx, both of which include the remains of important people from Egypt's past. Is it a coincidence that a cemetery grew up in a region that was also known as the Tomb of Sokar? In my previous video I showed a number of geometrical alignments made by Rodney Hale, showing how Gebel Ghibli is an integral part of the Giza landscape. This is a fact that cannot be disputed and there are many more mathematical models that show just how important Gebel Ghibli was. But author David Allen Ritchie has taken the analysis to another level and claims to have solved the mathematics of the Great Pyramid a sacred geometrical puzzle that points to the entrance of the House of Sokar, just in front of the Gebel Ghibli natural hill. And this isn't just any point, but it is the exact position of the tomb of the Coptic saint Hamad al-Saman. It is no surprise that this was the first tomb to be placed in the Coptic cemetery in the 14th century. His grave is positioned exactly 33,000 inches south by 16,500 inches east of the centre of the Great Pyramid, the significance of which is for a future video. Yet, because of his importance, the saint's tomb can never be disturbed. There is a little known tradition in the village of Nazlet el Saman, named after the saint, that Hamad al Saman guarded the entrance to an underground city or palace. In the year 2005, Andrew Collins gained access to the cemetery and discovered that in the adjacent Muslim cemetery, there is also a well dedicated to the saint. It is known as Bir al saman a deep artesian well from which comes crystal clear water, which is drunk by all who visit. Whether the entrance to the House of Sokar is under the Tomb of the Saints or via the well, there are two possibilities, and I'm sure it is one of them. I will go into this in much more detail in a future video, but it is interesting to note that the well is actually located on a number of ancient maps. I and many other authors have no doubt that the House of Sokar is here. The texts, the mathematics and geometry point to this location and I'm sure this has been known for a very long time. It is possible that Campbell's tomb, which is located next to the Sphinx, was renamed the Tomb of Osiris, a god who later merged with Sokar, as a clear misdirection by authorities to stop us searching in the right place. The House of Sokar is a gateway to the underworld, a mysterious chamber from the remote epoch of Zeptepi. If the Hall of Records was going to be anywhere, it would not be inside a pyramid, but located within the oldest part of Giza, close to the primordial mound in Rostau, which was the realm of Sokar. The renowned psychic Edgar Cayce made the Hall of Records famous. This was the name he gave to Giza's lost underworld that contains arts, treasure and knowledge of an antediluvian civilization. He called it a time capsule from Atlantis. It is the House of Sokar, also known as the Tomb of Sokar Osiris, and it is lying there in a modern cemetery, under the body of a saint, or inside a holy well, waiting to be discovered. To finish this video, take a look at Gebel Ghibli from the Khafre Pyramid Causeway, on the exact line between the Great Pyramid and the outcrop in question. Is that an enormous depiction of Sokar Osiris in the role of the Osiriform coffin, or is it just geological weathering? Everything we think we know about the Giza Plateau is often turned on its head. There is so much we just don't know, and there is so much waiting to be discovered. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.